Hello everyone. How will it be if you are moving to Australia with a job? Yes, in this video we are talking about especially for pharmacist to move to Australia with a job. For further information and details, you can contact the numbers given below. Here I am talking about the Knowledge Assessment of Pharmaceutical Sciences or the CAPS exam, which is mandatory for a pharmacist for moving with a job to Australia. This exam is required for your provisional as well as general registration in Australia as a pharmacist. The exam is actually conducted by Australian Pharmacy Council. And the best thing about the exam is we can write the exam in our home country. There will be onshore and offshore exam centers. In India, we have exam centers at Bangalore, Mumbai, New Delhi, etc. The exam is conducted three times in a year, March, July and November. Next, I am going to talk about the qualification of the exam. Either you are a B Farm, M Farm or Farm D graduate, you can appear for the exam. Actually, work experience is not mandatory for writing this particular exam. A graduate can simply go and write CAPS exam. Once again, you should remember that work experience is not mandatory for writing the exam, but it will be an add-on in your visa process. The first and foremost step in your migration process is your skill assessment plus CAPS exam. The skill assessment is actually the verification of your documents by the Australian Pharmacy Council. For that purpose, we should have to make a candidate portal in the Pharmacy Council site that is directly to the Australian website. For that, we have to upload our documents and our documents include your passport, which is the mandatory one, then your birth certificate, transcript, transcript is together known as the consolidate of your whole degree the degree certificate, your pharmacy original license and work experience might be asked. If you have work experience, you can add that. Otherwise, there is no issues for the skill assessment process. So work experience can be added if you have. At the same time, if you are applauding a resume, which all work experience you had given, the same thing should be written clearly in your resume. That is also not necessary but you can give if you have. Plus, if you have any changes in your name, for example, your spouse name, your father's name, like that, if you have any changes, you should have the supporting documents along with the other documents. So your name should be similar in your passport and in all other documents. That is one thing you have to remember and it is a mandatory one. The skill assessment fee is actually 1310 AUD and it is directly paid to the Australian Pharmacy Council. Remember, all the payments will be done through credit card and at the same time, the payment is done directly as well as it is through the candidate portal which we had made for the skill assessment process. After the skill assessment submission, you should have to wait for eight weeks. For say, they are telling like it, it, it is eight weeks. Uh, it might vary like uh, more than eight weeks or before eight weeks, your skill assessment results might be announced. All the contacts will be done through mail. So once your skill assessment is done by them, they'll send you a mail that you can book for the exam. For example, if your exam is in March, then you'll have a four week time um, for to uh, book for the exam. So once you get the mail that your skill assessment is done clearly and you can book for the exam, you can book in that particular date for the concerned period of exam. Like I've told like if it is in March, so that's all about the skill assessment process. Yes, it is done. Next is we have to sit for the exam. So what is actually this CAPS exam? CAPS is conducted by Pearson View. It's an American based company. It's an online exam. It's a closed book exam. At the same time, uh, you'll have 100 questions each. You'll have a paper one and paper two, two hours each for the exam to be completed. Once the exam is over, they announce a particular date when the results will be published. So you can wait for the results. Again, once the results are published, what is the next step? Yes, of course, you should have to attend an English exam, 
which is according to your preference. It can be PTA Karamik, ILTS, Stoiflibiti or OAT. It can be according to you. One thing which I forgot to tell about CAPS exam was actually there is no negative marking. So you should uh, don't have to worry about the negative marks. You can attend all the 100 questions of both papers. Okay, next I'm moving on to the English test. For PG Academic, you should have to get individual 65 points. Uh, at the same time in INTS at 7. So similar bands are there for you to get in certain English exams. You should have to look on that and have to score about that. So there will be three types of English uh, points when you are applying for the PR visa like competent, proficient, superior etc. So after completing this particular English exam then we can move on to the visa application. Just I am stating two types of visa that is permanent visas like 190 and 491. This is just some examples. For applying for these two visas, after your English test, you can submit expression of interest. For certain states actually there is, along with EOI, we can also see ROI. For instance, for states like Victoria and Queensland and all, there is an ROI also. So that all things will be done after your English test. We have to uh, upload certain things. It's not like documents, but uh, to meet our points. I've just told about the 190 and 491 visas because we all prefer to go with the PR. And at the same time, we have a state sponsorship, five points. Actually, there are many more visas and sub visas. Uh, we can see the correct details in Australian side of Department of Home Affairs. For those visas I have told and also for all other visas, uh, if you have 3 year experience, that will be an add-on. That is the one thing which I have told about experience. For writing the exam actually experience is not mandatory, but it will be an add-on in case for applying for the visa submission. Because if you have 3 year experience, there will be points added. Actually, it is a point based migration. So that points will be added if you have experience. Uh, then after applying for this 190 and 491, we have to wait for a certain period. Uh, for say it is like 6 to 7 months. So if you have an invitation within these months, we are able to go with PR. Otherwise, the next option is like applying for a sponsorship visa. That is through mediators, through sponsors. Its name is 494 visa. For that visa, actually, this three year experience is mandatory. Again, I am saying that there are many types of visas and subclass. For that, there are certain year of experience mandatory. The exact details will be there in Department of Home Affairs Australian site. We can see that. As we are going in whichever visas, whatever it is, 194, 91, 494, whatever visas it is, we will be going, uh, once the pharmacist who cleared CAPS exam will be going there as an intern pharmacist, intern pharmacist post. So that the half salary of the licensed pharmacist will be provided for an intern pharmacist. And at the same time, the greatest attraction is what I have told. It is paid, it is paid internship. Once we meet the Australian standards, like for a period, if we are completing a certain hours of internship in Australia, We'll have to attend an oral exam as well as a written exam in Australia. After completing that process only, we'll be registered there as a pharmacist. That is our complete registration process will then only be completed. So basically, once you clear CAPS exam, of course there will be a driving force within us to move forward. That's sure. If you have a correct study plan, and if you are moving in a systematic manner, I am sure that you can pass the CAPS exam. And we are here to help you in your journey and let's make it possible. Thank you.